Good morning, folks. The screen is currently blank, like last night's update. For those who don't know what Fly on the Wall is, every week I get on Skype with members of our community and discuss the top stories and topics. We deliver opinions and give more detailed explanations than can be given in these short news. The audio is uploaded to our website weekly, and it is just the audio. Back to the news. We see three nebulae recently photographed by Spitzer, including the ghost Jupiter nebula in the middle. There will be a solar eclipse on November 3rd that almost nobody who watches this channel will see. Southern Europe and Northeast Brazil have a good shot, but this is mostly an African visual this round. Coming back to the Australian bushfires, NASA's Earth Observatory showing advanced satellite views from above, including the burn scar where it's been. University of California putting out a solid article on the delicacy of our oceanic chemistry. Turns out, takes a lot less than previously thought to cause mass extinctions. Climate.gov, currently down when I checked. I'm not really going to complain as it's my least favorite official climate site. So much so, it's the focus of episode one of a multi-part series that will ramp up this winter. Climate, with a lie in the middle. If you've seen the first expose of our keeper's dishonesty, you know why I've named it as such. We're going to fully explain each point of the climate lies one by one. Speaking of false info, people refuse to stop faking Bruce Gary's work. Before it was somebody adding UFOs to his pictures with Photoshop. Now somebody is blatantly making up quotes and the Huffington Post bought it. Enough to make you shake your head. Hey Bruce, want to be on Fly on the Wall? Set the story straight? Same invite goes to Dennis and Tom. Well, we had our first southern storm of the season, but he checked his calendar and remedied his false start. Meanwhile, the West Pacific is picking up again with the development appearing to be headed at the Philippines. Hurricane Raymond is a bit of a mystery out in the East Pacific. The models have absolutely zero agreement about the eventual path of him. But the moisture is unquestionably getting sucked up over Mexico and into the American Southwest, where it's going to meet up with moisture spun down from the northern Pacific and Canada over top the Rockies. The convergence of air masses is all out west, as the strongest meeting near Texas will see the thunderstorms. Snow will continue in the mountains and up into Canada. The severe weather has spread across the European continent as the lows move on. We also definitively have a back-end low to the system, likely to cause more issues as it crests next. The deaths have spread to the Netherlands and some other nations. Debris-related power outages force shutdowns of the Dungeness reactors. Meanwhile, the same story of rain further north than it hit most of the southern winter. The system will quickly head east across the water to New Zealand. A solar wind telemetry showing another pitiful interplanetary shock. The speed and density showing in the CME likely won't cause any storms unless they really ramp up some more today. Still got the high energy protons at minimal elevation. We are in a brief downtick, but the flaring and flaring potential are still afoot. The departing spots can still fire, but are unlikely to be geo-effective if they pop CMEs. The incoming sunspots are showing both solid umbral size and magnetic complexity, we're looking for the meeting of positive blue and negative red umbras within a penumbral region. Be sure not to mistake surface plagues with umbral magnetics. It's the dark sunspots that are the interactive features. That group up north develops. It is set up to be magnetically complex from the get-go. Now one of yesterday's flares released a significant CME in Earth's direction. It is difficult to catch here on Lasco C2 unless you switch to the gray view that Cactus uses. Should be able to see a minimal halo effect that CME mostly heading left. NASA's annual spiral does show Earth impact, while NOAA's annual shows a possible glancing blow. Our own eyes should make a side with NASA on this one. The other eruptions are pretty but not geo-effective, including that one down south. The coronal magnetic fields went a bit berserk yesterday, have an Earth-facing opening up to the north but which never got beyond medium power levels. Had a couple quakes in rare locations, first part of that watch peaked last Friday. These mid-watch lulls have become as reliable as the quake upticks themselves, and we had it over the weekend. Stronger space weather expected, and the planets are lining up, so here we go. Lockheed a bit backlogged on Helio Viewer. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.